Okay. And it looks hello, everybody, as folks are coming in. All right. Hi, Karen. It looks like we have folks coming in. So everybody just hang with us for just a second as everybody gets through the virtual door that we just opened up. Hey, Kevin, people are coming in. Just give us about 10 more seconds and we'll get going, everybody. Seems like a slow trickle today instead of a mad rush. That's okay. However that is, people want to come in. Is exactly. Great. All right. It kind of looks like we're so oh, I say that and then we add more. I was going to say it looks like we're slowing down a touch. So I bet we can get going, Commissioner. Okay, perfect. Well, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Kristen Stevens. Thank you to Michelle Bird, who's been help um, organize this and, and get it promoted. And um, this is my first listening session as a county commissioner. So it's pretty exciting for me. I wish I could be in person because I can't see any of you, but, um, but welcome nonetheless. And um, I'm happy to have uh, my fellow commissioners joining me tonight. So we have Commissioner Kafalis who represents District 1 and Commissioner Shattuck McNally who represents District 3. And I'm in the middle, I'm District 2. And, uh, and so why don't I um, see if um, Commissioner Kafalis or and then Commissioner um, Shattuck McNally, if you have any words that you want to share before I kind of launch into some of what I'd like to say. Well, th thanks, Kristen. I just want to, uh, I'm just here to listen to folks and, and be supportive of you in, in your first listening session. I think as a, the three of us were, um, you know, we're getting to learn how to work together uh, well and developing a rhythm. I think that's really positive. I'm really grateful to be working with these two folks. And I think one of our collective goals as part of our work plan is figuring out the most effective way to do community outreach. And so we'll be working with Michelle and other folks to look at you know, how we can improve these community conversations and what other things we might be able to do to, you know, to stay more connected with folks and and also to be as inclusive as possible. So I'm here mostly to listen and if I can help with any of the questions in, in terms of answers, I'll do that. But otherwise it's, um, Kristen, it's your show, that's for sure. Thanks, John, I appreciate that. And Commissioner Shattuck McNally. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Stevens. I'm really excited to be here with you today. Thank you for inviting us to join you on your first uh, community conversation. I'm um, so excited to be working alongside both you and Commissioner Kafalas. We've had a really busy, what, 45 days, 40 days. We've gotten a lot done together, and I'm really excited for the progress and work that we've gotten done and looking forward to all the things that we've set our goals on last week. And I appreciate um, just both of you and your experiences and how well um, how well we've had these conversations together and, and these issues. And I'm really glad to be here tonight and I'm here to listen and help offer assistance, but mostly I'm here to support you on your first listening session tonight. So thanks. Well, thank you so much, um, John and Jody. And, um, you know, I, I picked this time partly because I didn't want to run into anyone else's um, listening session times or community conversation times, but also kind of, you know, playing around with what time works best for folks. So um, as you give input and, and you, um, you know, share things, please let us know what time of day is, is convenient for you. And if you know other people who maybe couldn't make it because it was a certain time, and then hopefully as um, John and Jody and I kind of can stagger our listening sessions. So maybe you can't make it on a Saturday morning, you can make it on a weeknight, maybe a, maybe a lunch in one is better for you. So um, help us get a feel for what works for you and, and, and others, um, that would be great. So, um, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about a little bit is just so, some COVID updates because we got some really good COVID updates yesterday from our health director, Tom Gonzalez. And I know that that's um, top on people's minds. So just share a little bit about what's going on with COVID and then we'll kind of launch into um, the, our work plan for the year. So um, Tom reported yesterday that 54,323 people in the county have had at least one dose of the vaccine, which is really good. Um, I think it's somewhere around 13 to 14% um, of the county. Um, and about 24,000 folks have had two vaccinations. Um, this is largely people over 70. So in that age group, 67% of people over 70 have had uh, the vaccine 
have had one dose of the vaccine and 32% have had both. Um, and look at there, Michelle's given us some vaccine information. That's great. Um, so, and we, especially we've been uh, able to get the vaccines out to people in long-term care facilities. And we've seen, having done that, um, the numbers have gone down 90%. So we're not really seeing active cases at those long-term care facilities. And Tom reported that there were a couple cases, but because people had already been vaccinated, they were very mild. And so that's really good because we know that a lot of the deaths in our county have occurred at these long-term care facilities. These are vulnerable people in our communities. And so we're really happy that we're getting them taken care of. Um, so that's some good news. Um, also, we're getting uh, the vaccines out to teachers and childcare providers. So uh, I think that almost everybody in Estes Park that provides childcare as a teacher received their vaccines and Jody is confirming. Um, and then in uh, Poudre School District and Thompson um, School District, I think we're at about 50% of folks who, who have gotten their vaccines. So we are getting teachers vaccinated. We know how important that is for kids to get back to school. We know that parents have been struggling with, you know, trying to do te teaching and, and education from their homes. And it, it prevents a lot of childcare situations that are difficult for working families. So, so that's really another piece of really good news. Um, so, um, so, and we also have transportation available for folks who are struggling with transportation to get their vaccines. Um, you can now, once you have an appointment for a vaccine, um, you can call 970-514-3636, which is the one call, one click number. And if you are struggling with transportation, they will help you figure out transportation. It's important to get that vaccine appointment first and then schedule the transportation. But we do have we do have options for folks. So that's really good because I know that can be a barrier for a lot of people in our community, um, especially with lower transit options. And um, finally, if you do need vaccines um, and you, you know, you can sign up at, with your hospital and your, your health care provider, but if you need um, more options, go to the Larimer County Health Department website or call them at 970-491-5500. I think I've heard that number enough that I know it now. Um, so those are good things. There are some challenges that we still face with regard to COVID. Uh, we, are having, we do have a lot of concerns about equity in our community. So a smaller percentage of people, uh, Latinx, uh, of our Latinx community has been vaccinated. Uh, there are a couple, you know, we, we feel anecdotally that there's a couple of reasons for that. One of the, those reasons is that um, there's some vaccine hesitancy and that another one could be other barriers like, um, you know, not having a healthcare provider, not knowing where to go, not having, you know, having some language barriers. So we're trying to work through some of that. Um, our, our director, Tom Gonzalez, is very cognizant of those issues and around equity. And so he has a, um, he has a person that he's uh, appointed to be able to be in charge of the equity piece around vaccines. And I don't know if I, I sometimes remember his name and it's, I'm not recalling it right now. It's Sergio. Um, Sergio, okay. Yes. So Sergio, Sergio Torres, is that right? Oh, good, okay. Um, so Sergio Torres is really working on, on the equity piece. And so that's something that's really important and we'll continue to make sure that that happens. We know that um, a lot of people in the Latinx community have um, maybe more health conditions that make, if they get COVID could be more severe. So we're really trying to work on that piece. Um, and you know, one of the suggestions is pop-up pop -up events. And one of the things that we will be looking at as we go further into the tiers of folks who can get vaccinated is really vaccinating our frontline workers. And we will definitely be paying attention to equity in this. And I think that the state is helping us organize a, um, a vaccine clinic for, for frontline workers that will, um, that will help us fo focus on those communities that are harder to, have been harder to reach for us. So, um, so that being said, we know that there are issues around equity with vaccine distribution and we are working on that. Um, another a bit of uh, not bad news, but it, it should give us a heads up is that we have been doing the wastewater surveillance. So we are able to test the wastewater and that and uh, the vaccine or the COVID appears in the wastewater before it actually manifests itself. And so uh, we can sort of 
figure out where it's going to pop up next, um, which is a really good tool for us. And, and it can be, and we can isolate those areas of town where we think it's popped up. I, I believe Campus West was one of the areas that was identified. So um, there's, there's a campaign right now educating folks that if they're not feeling well, they need to go get tested because that, that we've detected um, in our wastewater uh, that we've detected the COVID. Um, and so, and, and another thing to know is that one, with the, in the wastewater, we also have not only detected COVID, but detected the variants of COVID. So people may have heard of like the UK variant and the different kinds of COVID. And they're the same, they're just, uh, um, I'm not a scientist, but uh, these different variants can be uh, problematic because they're more contagious. And so, um, they're not necessarily more serious once a person gets them, but they are they're able to pass between people more easily. So we are keeping an eye on that. And, um, and Tom did mention that they're working with CSU because we have a big, uh, popu the population of 18 to 24 year olds is where we're seeing the still uh, an increase in COVID amongst that age group. And so really working with CSU to educate uh, their students uh, around that. So. That is what's going on. Oh, and also today at the, um, I think at the ranch, it, there was a there was a, cl a vaccine clinic and I think they were gonna va vaccinate 700 people today. And I know because a, a childcare provider person that I know got their vaccine today. So, so that's good. So we're, we keep rolling it out. We're getting around 10,000 um, doses a week. And we're hoping that picks up because the Johnson & Johnson vaccine should be rolling out pretty soon. And so we're hoping that the rollout, um, you know, continues to increase and that we're, we can set up more clinics. And, and uh, I think that the health department's ready to, ready to roll with these big vac vaccination clinics. So uh, we've been able to use the ranch for both testing and these uh, clinics. And, um, but there are also options to get them at places like Salud and the hospital. So um, please be in touch if you have um, any concerns or questions about that. And now I will work, go on to our work plan. So about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago. I hate yes. to interrupt you, but we do have a question about COVID. Do you want to address oh, it right now? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do Sorry, that. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you, please. But, <laughs> um, Barb Alexi. Hi, Barb. Good to not see you, but see you. Um, she says, hello, all. I had my second vaccine dose yesterday, and it made me wonder who's paying for it. Who's paying for it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's the federal government. Yeah, I, I think that that's right. You know, and, and there's some cases where, I, yeah, I think it is the federal government um, at this point. So, um, yes, we, we can verify that, but I believe that that's true. I, I'm I'm 97 percent sure that that's yeah. Right. I mean, oh. with a public health emergency, it makes sense for the, the federal government to step in. It's not just, you know, your sort of typical flu vaccine. It's, it's a, you know, it's really obviously a lot worse. And so I think that that's why the federal government stepped in in this case. So, um, all right. That was the question we had about COVID, so. Okay, all right. Well, please, if anybody else has any further questions, let us know, but um, I'll just move on um, briefly to talk about the work plan, our work plan. So uh, as I was saying before, we a couple of weeks ago, we met and had a retreat, uh, three, three of us. And we talked about what we want to work on in the upcoming year. Um, as you can imagine, the list got pretty long. And so, but I think it's good to be ambitious and aspirational. And so I'm excited to get to work on a lot of these issues. Um, so one of the issues uh, that we'd like to work on is um, outreach and engagement with an eye to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So uh, we, we want to pay attention to issues of inclusion. We want to make sure we're hearing all the voices. Um, and so that's really important for us to, and I know Michelle's going to be a big part in helping us get there. Um, so there again, if you do have suggestions on ways that we can do that, I, we would love to hear those because um, we are really trying to make sure that we're, that we're hearing all those voices and that we're bringing those into the room. And I think that, you know, for, for all of us, that includes, you know, participation on boards and commissions. So just wanted to remind folks that we do have a lot of boards and commissions. We may even be creating a couple new ones. And so um, we're always, you know, we're often taking applications. So if you go to our website, you can you can access those applications. And there's a variety of uh, different boards and commissions where you can participate, whether you're interested in land use or you're interested in 
our park systems, um, you know, there are a lot of opportunities to engage. And so I would encourage you to do that. Since you're already on this uh, call, you're probably already engaged. So get more engaged and join us. Um, and, you know, we really want to use those boards and commissions as a way to, you know, inform our work. And so it's really important for us. I mean, that's, it's not just a sort of a token board and commission, you know, the, you, you would, if you serve on a board of commission, you will really be helping advise us about policy decision, decisions. And so it's, um, I think it's really interesting work for the community members who participate and it's really, really helpful for us too. So, um, so another um, item that we're working on and, and I think that, you know, seeing some of the participants, I know that you're already engaged on this issue, but we are looking at uh, phase two of our land use um, code. And one of those items in that code is the oil and gas regulations. So there were regulations adopted last year and those uh, regulations do not um, match the state. They're, they're not as the state created new regulations and those are stricter in, in many ways. And so one thing we absolutely have to do is to make sure our regulations are in line with the state regulations, but we have been asked by many community members to go further than that and really take into consideration community members' health, um, the health of our environment, uh, location of oil and gas um, extraction near our waterways and our open spaces. And, and so we really wanna take a deeper dive and look at other ways that we can protect the community um, through those regulations. And so we are starting that process and um, we're probably almost every meeting that we have in the next several weeks, we'll be discussing sort of how we're tweaking either those, our engagement process around that, um, ways that we, um, things that we wanna change, you know, and, and may even be extending that engagement process. Did, John, did you have something you wanted to uh, Just, thank you, Kristen. Just to let folks know that in our upcoming uh, community planning uh, work session on, on Monday, March 1st, I, I don't know the details, but oil and gas regulations will be one of the topics. And then there is an open house schedule for Wednesday, March 3rd. And, and perhaps um, Michelle, I, I'm not sure if you can access the link through the, you know, the website that she put on, but there will be an open house on Wednesday, um, March 3rd. Sorry, my dog's oh, hard um, Sorry, we have uh, also the survey to uh, just put that up for the oil and gas, and that is open until um, the last day of February. So um, um, please uh, fill that out so that we have um, lots of different folks input on that. So thank you, Michelle, for putting that in the chat. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. Yeah, the questionnaire is, is a really good way to give your input. There's a couple of people that have felt that the questionnaire wasn't um, didn't give them enough options to give their input. So if you run out of characters or whatever the case might be, please feel free to shoot us an email or call us or, or attend one of these open houses that we'll have and, and give more input. So we're not gonna limit your input to, to a little box. Um, you know, I think it, I mean, we, we wanna hear from you. So please stay engaged on this issue. And, and we are, you know, looking to, to hear from everyone about this. So um, we'll also be looking at our sign code so those are the kind of two most pressing parts of the land use code that we'll be looking at. So sign code is, you know, all the, all the whether it's billboards or that, that kind of all signage in the county, you know, what that looks like, how big it can be, how bright it can be, can it be electronic, can it be multicolor, you know, all those kind of um, interesting things about sign, um, sign code. And for those of you, I saw several people who have joined me in, in um, city council stuff, you know, we, we looked at our sign code then too. So sign code can be maybe more interesting than people think it is. <laughs> so stay tuned on that and stay engaged on that too. Um, and then uh, uh, we will also be, so we're looking, you know, we're continuing to work on our solid waste and ranch master plan. So we had an update today about work that we'd like to do on the ranch. And we can go into more detail on that if people want to. Um, but suffice it to say that we, you know, we, a few years ago or a couple of years ago, people voted to um, keep the ranch uh, tax for another 20 years. So it's a 0.15% um, tax and uh, we will be expanding some of the facilities out at the ranch and, and 
Um, it's a great facility for folks. It's, it's a community gathering place. It's a place for the fair. It's a place to, you know, celebrate our rural heritage. And so, so there, and it's gonna, you know, we're, we're hoping to build in a lot of amenities there too that will, that will benefit the community. And um, so um, more to come on that, that that'll keep rolling out as we go through the year. Um, and then working on affordable childcare and affordable housing is really important to us. Um, you know, we're not, I, I think that, you know, that's been a continuing conversation in all our communities, wherever you live in the county. And so we know it's important to folks and it's something we want to continue to work on. Um, Re-energizing strategic broadband initiatives. So really looking at broadband outside the municipalities, a lot of the municipalities are working on this one gig and this high speed internet, but there are so many folks throughout the county that don't have high speed internet. And we've seen with, with the COVID crisis that there's many that kids can't you know, go to school and, and people can't work from home if they don't have good broadband. So really trying to see you know, what we can do in that space. I'm hopeful that there'll be some, when we, when, if there's a infrastructure rollout with the federal government that we'll see um, that, 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 that broadband is included as infrastructure and that we'll see more attention paid to that. Um, Let's see, uh, some work that we're um, you know, doing about the Justice Center and space with regard to the county buildings. You know, we did have an update today about our facilities throughout the county and um, you know, we have some exciting things. Um, we, you know, we have the jail expansion and I know some folks you know, aren't, weren't supportive of that, but it will provide better facilities for people who need medical care and separate populations, people that, um, will have more livable conditions, I think, in the jail. And I think that that piece is really important. Um, we'll also be able to expand, you know, some beds for alternative sentencing and community corrections. And those are programs that keep folks out of jail, out of prison, and really give them the tools that they need to reenter our society. And so, um, so that's a really exciting, um, you know, piece. We had, we had the update about the ranch. We're getting uh, a new fleet services center. And so we have a lot of kind of building um, what we call capital projects, you know, ongoing right now. Um, but we also um, have some needs at the Justice Center. So where all the courthouses or the courtrooms are located, they are, there's a shortage of space there. And so that's something we'll be um, figuring out how to solve that problem. That one has no easy solutions. Um, and then and, and Commissioner Kafalos may want to talk a little bit about this, but he's been really spearheading the, uh, the climate smart Larimer County. So really paying attention to climate change, you know, how we can lower our greenhouse gases, how we can build a resilient community to deal with some of the effects of climate change. And so, you know, um, Commissioner Shaddock McNally and I are, are really excited to jump on board and support this, this framework that he's created. So, um, John, do you mind talking just for a few minutes about that? I'll, I'll be brief, Kristen. Thanks for the opportunity. Just one, one little bit of update there is I think next Tuesday, uh, we have a meeting with um, uh, one of our staff, uh, one of our county employees in the Office of Emergency Management, Stephen, and, uh, and the county manager. And we'll spe be specifically talking about a proposed RFP, uh, the scope of the work and, and some other details and the, and the idea would be that we would put this RFP out and, and, and seek to get a consultant to help us with the next phase of this project, which is the, the community engagement phase. Uh, right now, if you go to the, um, the website, Climate Smart website, you'll see there's an 80 page report and then there's a, a, a 12 page document that we're actually still refining a little bit. We'll have that finalized very soon, but um, that's what we have so far. And we want to make sure that we're getting a lot of input from all the different community sectors. And we also want to, once again, use the uh, equity lens here as far as environmental justice kinds of things. So that's the next phase. And then based on the, the input that we get, the feedback, the report that we develop from that, that will inform how do we move forward with phase three, which is looking at actually developing some kind of climate smart Lambert County action plan. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm excited and we're excited to get a lot of engagement on, on this topic and really, you know, see what the community wants, you know, and, and there again, we want to be good stewards as, as county employees too, and make sure that we're, 
you know, um, do, doing our part to you know, be energy efficient and, and, you know, change our fleet, electrify our fleet and not, you know, driving when we don't need to. And so, you know, I think that, that that's also a piece of, of what we're, we're looking at. So we're not just saying this is what you need to do. We're saying we need to do this too. And actually along those lines, Chris, and forgive me, but um, uh, this, this climate smart thing aligns very well with one uh, objective number five in goal number three that deals with services. But uh, objective five is this environmental sustainability. We updated the policy. And so I think the goal will be to take this, the work that we've done on this climate smart and, and somehow connect it with this environmental sustainability, which is looking more internally, you know, what the county can do as an organization to be more environmentally sustainable. I thought that was important to add. Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely right. And so that just when John talks about like goal number three, you know, we, we have a strategic plan and we each are are, you know, kind of shepherding these different goals and then with with very much help from uh, county staff on, on helping us. And I have um, goal number three, which has different objectives underneath them, but um, which are both inward and outward facing in many ways. So it's how we can be a better organization to give better service to the people who live in our communities. And so, um, you know, we'll be looking at that with an equity and, you know, an inclusion in mind. So, you know, how do we build an equitable and you know, workforce for the future kind of, and, and that, that can meet the needs of our, our community as it changes as well. So I think that, um, I think all of our goals, um, Jody's with infrastructure and John is with, John yours is more um, around services that we provide, is that right? That's, that's how uh, Linda Hoffman refers to it. I prefer to refer to it as econo advancing economic opportunities and quality of life, uh, well-being and resiliency. Oh, I, that sounds great. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so um, kind of speaking of economic health, too, is, is one of the you know, things that I think we're, we're continuing to work on is, is, you know, COVID recovery. And so when we get these updates on COVID, we're also getting updates on, you know, economic um, opportunities that we maybe have for small businesses to get funding, to get, you know, to get help, um, to get mentorship on how to how to you know, ride out the storm, so to speak. And I think that that's really important for all of us is to make sure that our economy, um, that things stay going. And so that's why we work really intimately with the health department um, to make sure that we're, you know, get, getting that balance right. We wanna keep people safe and we wanna keep businesses open. And I feel like if we keep people safe, safe we can keep businesses open. And that, you know, we, we're, um, we're very cognizant of that. Also really working with the workforce development, knowing that folks have lost their jobs. And so that we need, you know, people may need different skills to get into new fields. Um, if, if the place that they worked at doesn't exist or their business, you know, is, is struggling, we wanna make sure that people have those skills to get new jobs and, and build, build their businesses back up and so. We have a lot of resources to do that. And, you know, kind of if anybody needs any more information on that, we can probably um, shoot out some websites on that, on how to do that too. But there are there are a lot of small business um, grants and loans out there. And, um, you know, if, if people are interested, we're happy to help connect you to those. Um, and then the fire, of course, you know, we had, we had the largest fire um, in Colorado history was uh, in Larimer County. And so we have a lot of folks, you know, we, we, I think 150 or plus folks that have lost um, a residence. And, and so really trying to help those folks, trying to help um, clear up debris in the, in the fire areas, um, you know, concerns about rain and, and possible flooding in those areas where they've, you know, where there's an, an erosion issues and, and water quality. So we're lucky that we have a really, really good emergency manager that's um, pretty well known throughout our state and probably throughout our country that's at the helm. And so, you know, feel really confident about our, our ability to, you know, get the, get the work done that we need to get done before spring runoff happens. And so, but there's a lot of debris cleanup that needs to happen. Uh, and um, we're, we are working on that as well. So um, I, I to, John or Jody, did I miss anything as far as our items that we're working on? I just asked Michelle if she could 
on the wildfire stuff, uh, Kristen, there's a there's a, a comprehensive uh, website link that provides all these resources, you know, CSU extension, a variety of things. And I've asked okay. Michelle to post that, but I, I think you've done a great job. Yeah, and so, and I think that this Saturday we have a, um, we have a, um, if, if you like this format, <laughs> you can join us on Saturday morning. Uh, we'll be talking, we'll be talking exclusively about the fires and um, fire recovery on Saturday morning um, at a, at a town hall. And it won't, it won't just be the commissioners. There'll be um, our emergency manager and, and, and probably some other folks. I don't know if there'll be folks from other agencies, you know, with these kind of uh, wildfire situations, we work a lot with our, because there's a lot of federal lands, we work with the forest service. And, and so, um, you know, that there, there are, um, it's a team effort. We work with FEMA and, and so, uh, different people can kind of sometimes answer different questions. And, and I know United Way has set up a, a fund as well to help people who are struggling with the fire. So, you know, we, we have a lot of partnerships, which is great because these are in these big emergency situations, you know, it, it takes, it takes a village really to recover. And so grateful for all that. So that being said, oh, Jody, well, can I just add one quick thing yeah. that we did that was kind of cool, if you don't mind, Kristen? Um, a couple of weeks ago, we approved, um, I think it's kind of innovative and one of the first in the, in the, in the state, is we approved a, um, and Michelle, you can correct me if I didn't get that correct, but I think we are leading the way with this. We approved a, a remote worker policy which um, we are saving money as a county because we gave up some lease space out on Midpoint Drive. And uh, 150 um, county employees now don't have a permanent spot inside a county building, but that means they're able to work remotely from home. And to support those workers, since we have these guiding principles as a county, which we wanna make sure that one of those is kind of being a good um, employer and taking care of our employees and making sure they have a you know, good safe workplace and they like where they work is that we gave a remote stipend of $1,200 for them to get like an ergonomic chair or make sure they have the right you know table for, I, I bought a table that kind of goes up and down. I actually bought it off my son. So I got a good deal. So, cause he didn't need it anymore but it goes up and down. And, and so we have that um, and those 150 employees can um, apply for that stipend. And, um, and then there's a $500, I think, for years afterwards. And those employees will, we're going to be looking at how that works for, um, for them being productive. You know, I'm sure they'd be very productive. They've been doing it during COVID, but how that works. And, but we're also going to make sure that when they can come in for meetings and do things like that. So it's kind of innovative. I think it's great because it kind of fits into uh, Commissioner, you know, Kafals has worked on this great Climate Smart Plan, but we're all coming together to, to bring it together and implement it is that kind of um, gets folks to, um, you know, gets them off the road and they can, you know, not have to drive in weather like tonight and things like that. So it, it's really kind of unique. And uh, I think it's on the website. It's really some exciting stuff um, that we're doing. And I'm really proud of that we were able to sign that off. And um, yeah, just that was one thing I wanted to share. I think that's kind of cool. So thanks for letting me share that. Oh, thank you, Jody. And yeah, you're absolutely right. That's a good program because it, it, you know, it also really keeps cars off the road. And as we look to decrease our greenhouse gas emissions, you know, programs like that will really help us get to um, where, where we need to be. So um, I think it's good for a variety of reasons. So, um, and I'm hoping other employers and large employers, you know, take note and realize that that, that could be a cost savings for them as well. So um, great. Well, so I, you know, I, I don't see any questions, but I encourage folks to, to type in any questions if you have any questions. Um, I'm sure we can always still keep talking, but, um, but happy to answer any specific questions that folks might have. Um, you know, with my all my six weeks of um, experience, <laughs> I'm sure I can answer them all. Commissioner, <laughs> um, can I do a plug for, um, actually, I kind of have two things I want to plug for. Is that okay? Absolutely. The first one is right now we're taking um, applications and I'm trying to, I'm very bad of, I can't do two things at once. So I'll talk first and link later. Um, we're doing applications for the Environmental Stewardship Awards um, are open right now. Um, so hopefully maybe some of you know someone that can be nominated. Um, and then the second thing, and I'll send both these links right after I'm done talking, is our Workforce Center is hosting 
um, two youth employment events here in early March to help youth find summer work. Um, and I think that's important to um, let folks know if you have any youth in your lives that need a summer job, um, this might be a good opportunity for them. Yeah, there's some that that's great because um, it's I have a teenager who works at Target and it's great to have him employed. <laughs> he likes it and he saved enough money to buy an electric bike, so he's super happy. Well, um, it keeps you out of trouble, right? That's right. Uh, and and the Conservation Corps will probably will have they hired or I don't know the Larimer County Conservation Corps. That's I great... don't think they've quite started hiring yet, but I don't that will be happening soon. Absolutely. And I'll try to find a link for that. I'll put all those great. links in here. So you're, you're just going to get all the links you ever wanted and more. Um, but you know, better more information than less. And so so there are great opportunities with uh, with both the workforce and Larimer Conservation Corps is an option for young people to to work with the county. And then um, I I actually uh, have been working with Boys and Girls Club and they are also hiring. So um, they'll be hiring for just summer work too. And so I, I kind of wanted to link Jacob um, in workforce development with them um, to let them know that they're doing a lot of hiring as well. So, um, so which is good. So we can keep people, keep these young people busy and, and get them job skills. So that's, that's great news. John? You're muted. You're still muted, John. If if there are questions, I see the chat has some numbers. I'll just I'll just defer. I'll wait. We do have one question. You want me to go ahead and read it out loud? All right, I'm seeing a head nod. Yes. So Andrew Andrew asks, has weather in Texas caused any delays in the vaccine supply chain for the county? I have a family member who is scheduled to get his second dose via King Supers this week, but his appointment has been delayed as vaccines are now being held up in Texas. Any current any concerns about the county's supply? I did think that, and and maybe my fellow commissioners can remind me, but I did think that there were some delays because of because of the weather, and I think we didn't get some some of the supplies. I'm hoping that those supply chains have opened back up and that we'll start seeing the movement. But I mean, at least the 700 vaccines that we were going to give out today at the ranch, I think that that happened. But I do think that there may be some delays. Um, I don't know much information about that exactly, though. Does anyone else know about that? I, I think we did get our 10,000 for this week, um, but I, I know that there have been concerns about the delay and they were trying to, um, you know, make sure those the need with the people getting in with the freezing and stuff and having to go into sites together. But um, uh, I was in that meeting last week with um, the Lieutenant Colonel Piper that's in charge of kind of for the state for organizing all of that. And it was interesting because they're also trying to make sure that second doses, you know, trying to time the first doses with the second doses. So the second doses have to be given in that window. And she was trying to explain there was some delay in getting some to make sure they had the right second dose numbers to those kinds that needed them at that time versus getting the first doses back in. So it sounded like there was some glitches there because of their switching a system or the, um, and so that was last week, but I don't know if that has to do something with the delay as well. But it, it certainly sounds like they're trying very hard to do everything they can to, to make sure they get shots. Yeah, I think the, if I remember right, the vac the delays affected vaccines that were supposed to be delivered last week, but that this week we were maybe back on track. So um, I, I would say um, to the person who was asking the question that we would, you know, that hopefully things will get right back on track. And so um, make sure that you, you know, you reschedule that appointment and and there again, if uh, if folks are are struggling or don't know where to go, the Larimer County Health Department again. I, I know Michelle had put up the link, but you know they they you can call them, you can text them, and you can email or go online and fill out their form. And so they have a lot of different options. Um, and if you you know have waited too long or or you're you know experiencing you know delays, I think you know going to them and and they have a lot of the answers that you might need. So. Um, I think that they're pretty good. I'm, I'm sure they get a lot of phone calls and texts during the day, but I think they're really good about answering them. So. And, and Kristen, it's important to note that there are bilingual options. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, there, there are bilingual options. So um, if, if folks um, 
you know, they can they can put someone who speaks Spanish online with with someone so they can find out the information they need. So um, that's great. Any other questions that anyone has? I'm not seeing any other questions right now. So maybe this is a time to go to Commissioner Capalas. Yeah, I, I was just going to mention, Kristen, that, um, you know, the strategic plan stuff, goals one, two, and three. And on Monday, we had a really good update on, on goal number uh, one, thank you, which is the infrastructure stuff, the transportation, like you said. But I think it's Monday, this Monday, March 1st, 10 a.m., we have our work session to get an update on goal number three, your goal, Kristen. So I thought folks should know about that. And, and, and they know if they go to the commissioner's um, uh, link, the weekly schedule, you can find out, you know, the details for um, uh, its broadcast, and you can also listen to it on, you know, through the larmer.org. Yeah, that's right. So we have a lot of meetings that are, you know, there are some meetings that we vote on. We have, you know, administrative matters meetings on Tuesday mornings, but we have quite a few work sessions throughout the week. Um, and so, you know, I, you know, if you're interested, you know, kind of stay tuned because there are a lot of really interesting topics that we're dealing with. So while we have this work plan, you know, we're also dealing with this sort of, you know, not that it's every day, but the everyday business of the county. So really, you know, how, how, how do all our departments function? You know, what does it look like? What are, what are those departments working on? And so, you know, we are constantly being updated on that. And so some of those, you know, are, are you know, will be very interesting to you and, and, you know, you can pop on and there's a county YouTube channel to it. And so you can see if you want to see something that happened previously, you can, you can take a look at that too. So. Yeah, we put all of the meetings um, on the YouTube channel so people can go back there and find whatever meeting they're, they're interested in doing. Or you can go back and watch me crying at my first, my first cry at Administrative Matters meeting as we honored my friend, uh, Sharon Zamora who died from COVID in December. She served for 15 years um, on the Office on Aging, Elmer County Office on Aging, and was involved with lots of things at the North Azalon Center and, and was uh, involved with things with Commissioner Kafalos and I for a long time. And some note, things to note, she was born in an igloo in South Dakota, um, which you know I don't think they have igloos up there anymore. Maybe they do. And she was the first woman in 1990 an indigenous woman, Native American woman to graduate from Front Range Community College. And I think that was noteworthy. And so um, I kind of got a little um, emotional yesterday when I thought about her because she called me right before she, well, well, before she couldn't speak anymore, she had gotten her test results back that she was positive. And so she died a few days later, but um, so those, it's nice that those meetings are um, on YouTube and, and broadcast. And I want to thank Commissioner Kofalos because I know he did a lot of work this last year for pushing for more of those those um, meetings to be televised and transparency. And so thank you, um, Commissioner, for getting that kind of set up for us going forward. And, and uh, we find, I find that our meetings, we tend to talk a lot. We have a lot of things to talk about. There's a lot of work to do. So we always run over, we try not to, but we, we run over a lot because we, we just, we really have a great dialogue and communication and ask lots of questions and there's a lot to talk about. So you might see us, um, you know, going over time, but that seems like our norm, so. Yeah, that was a great meeting in those administrative meetings on the Tuesday mornings at nine. Um, so we, you know, we we're often have a consent agenda items that we're, we're approving. Uh, we get to hear from the county manager, what she's been doing, you get to hear from all the commissioners, what they've been doing. There's there's opportunity for public comment in the, in the beginning. So if you have something that's on your mind, you have a few minutes to be able to come and talk to us about that. Um, and then we, we do sometimes have these special moments where we honor folks. So we honored, um, you know, Jody's friend. And then we also uh, uh, honored two veterans groups in Loveland for the work that they're doing to help fellow veterans, um, you know, during COVID. So as we know, people are struggling with rent and, and food, you know, troubles. And, and so really these are veterans who um, have already served our country and are still reaching out and trying to serve others um, in, in the Loveland area. So we wanted to recognize their efforts as well. And they were, of course, extremely humble and really happy to happy to serve. And it was a really nice moment. So 
So we, we actually can, can accomplish a lot and, and do a lot of um, great things during these meetings. And I think that they're hopefully really um, interesting to you all too. So um, I don't know if there's anything else. Does anybody have any questions? Also, uh, I don't know if we talked about the, house, um, the housing survey, but we, one of the things we are working on is, want to be working on is affordable housing. And our kind of first step at, um, at figuring out how to do this is really getting a survey from folks in our community about you know, the needs that, they, that you might have, the needs that you know that others have, some suggestions you might have around affordable housing. It's a, it's a really, uh, really user-friendly survey it's very approachable and it, it's, um, you know, it, it, it's not um, light by any means, but it's, it's got a playfulness about it that, you know, encourages you to keep kind of filling out a survey because you can get survey fatigue if you fill out too many surveys. And so we'd really love to have your input on this housing survey. It, as you know, we try to figure out ways to help with housing in, in, in the county. Um, you know, a lot of our municipal partners are, are working on this as well. So you know, how can we help help them do that work and, and what can we do on our end? And so um, we would love to, to have you fill that survey out too, so. I don't see any other questions and I don't see anybody with their hand raised. So this is probably the time, I think you've hit a lot of really good things that you guys have been working on. But if there's one last thing you wanna get in there, this might be the time. All right, I'll, I'll see if uh, John or Jody have anything you wanna add. I think everybody said their piece. So, um, well, if we don't have any more questions, then please know that you can always reach out to us um, by email, by, by phone, um, come to one of our meetings and, and talk to us. Uh, we can set up a Zoom meeting if you need a separate meeting for any kind of reason, um, but we are happy to, um, to talk to you and, and figure out what you want. We have clearly have a new, new county um, board of commissioners and, and we're eager to to get to work on the things that you know that are on our plan but also really want to hear from you so um please stay engaged and thank you for coming tonight thank you everyone good evening commissioners thank you awesome. have a good night everyone thanks for, night. thank thank you john and jody for joining me i really appreciate it and michelle can't thank you enough and john will be happy to see the baby yoda is in the picture so there yes you. always <laughs> <laughs> shout out to baby yoda <laughs> that's right good night right. everyone